What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering TikTok ads and my simple product testing strategy that you can go ahead and use as soon as possible for your business. So today I'm not gonna be talking about the type of products to sell on TikTok because it's kind of self-explanatory. I'm not gonna be going over how to set up the pixel and how to create a business manager and an ad account and things of that nature. That I'm gonna leave for you guys to do your own independent research and instead just show you my simple product testing strategy that you can use for fast fast and efficient product tests on TikTok. All right, so when we are in our TikTok ads manager, we wanna make sure that we are in the campaign section. This is obviously where we're gonna go ahead and create our campaigns, our ad sets, and our ads very similarly to Facebook. Now, typically like with any marketing platform, we do wanna go in and dive straight into conversions, but if you don't have those events unlocked yet, it might just be because your pixel hasn't been fired for them, so you might have to go and fire them yourself, or maybe start with a lower budget campaign and use a different optimization event in the very beginning. But assuming that you guys have the complete checkout optimization event unlocked, we're gonna dive into conversions and we're gonna go ahead and select that. So again, now when we are in the ad group level, which is similar to the ad set level on Facebook, we can go ahead and select the closest optimization event that we can to purchase, which is complete payment or whatever you have unlocked that is closest to this at this point in time. So now the way that I test products on TikTok is a lot simpler than a lot of you guys are probably thinking. I like to rely on most of the heavy lifting to be done by the TikTok algorithm and not based off of my intuition because I'm sure TikTok's algorithm is gonna be a lot better at finding customers than I am right off the bat. One thing that I will change is I'm gonna come into select placement and I'm only going to want ads shown on TikTok that I don't think is going to be ideal for the users within the country that I'm gonna be targeting. Now for the locations, I'm personally going to be testing in the United States and in Canada with the expectation to where if I am going to scale the product, I will venture off into some other countries. But keep in mind, if you do wanna get your ads approved, you're going to need a functional currency converter so that when people from the countries that you're targeting land on your website, they have an optimal user experience and they're not confused with differing currencies. Now, unless your product is super obviously tailored towards a given market, even if it is, I would just recommend keeping all of these broad. You might want to consider excluding the 13 to 17 year old range, but you'd be surprised at how prevalent those audiences are when it comes to purchasing some of the products that are more heavily geared towards younger people. They'll just take their parents' credit cards and start swiping like crazy if it's a product that they really like. If it's a female dominant product, you might want to go ahead and select females. And obviously, if you are targeting people who you intend to to speak the English language and you don't yet trust TikTok's algorithm, which I completely understand. But then I realized, hey, maybe it's just like Facebook where if you let them do the work and you let them have a creative freedom and control over how they allocate your budget, maybe you're gonna get rewarded for that. So I typically tend to keep this on no limits. So now here's where it gets a little bit interesting, our budget and our bid optimization. So not too long ago, TikTok didn't even allow users to use what normally is known on Facebook Facebook as auto bidding, which is essentially letting their algorithm set a competitive bid in their auction in which they think is going to maximize your conversions. Now, sometimes they set a competitive bid and other times is so high for the people that you're trying to reach that you actually need to set a higher bid if you wanna get better quality traffic within the platform. Now, at this stage, you guys are more than welcome to use the lowest cost optimization method, but I am going to show you how to use a bid method that has been giving me some pretty decent returns over the last few weeks. So typically I am going to set my daily budget in increments of my break even point. So if I'm getting a product for $10 and I'm selling it for 30, my break even point or my profit margin is gonna be that difference between 30 and 10, or in other words, 20. Now I find that having at least 10 to 20 times the value of that break even point at your daily budget to be a pretty ideal range for TikTok to start to be able to optimize a bit. I've noticed that the greater the budget, the quicker quicker the optimization, but sometimes you're able to lose a lot of money quickly if it's not a good product and it's not reaching an audience that's resonating well with that product. Especially because I've noticed TikTok to take a little bit longer
longer than Facebook to develop an ideal avatar for your product. So I personally try not to set that budget too high. So again, let's say that I'm selling a $10 product for $30. I'm gonna go ahead and put right around a $200 budget, which is 10 times my break even point. Now, depending on your product and your business and your previous ad experience on TikTok, they are going to give you a suggested bid in which you absolutely can ignore, but you might wanna just have in the back of their mind because that's what they want you to spend. And typically over time, that number is gonna get closer and closer to probably what you actually should bid. But to be on the safe side, we almost always want to start at the lowest possible bid that we can just get a little bit of spend through so that we can gradually increase that bid and still maintain profitability. So I like to personally start at around half to 75% of my break even point to start out with because typically my break even point is well under my average order profit so I can actually afford a little bit higher than my break even point on average to acquire a customer. So in other words, even if my break even point is $20, my average order profit might be 30. So if I'm bidding 25 and I'm getting 23 or $24 cost per purchases, I'm still quite profitable. But let's assume you don't have your back end optimized and it's not a product that people buy multiples of. So you probably wanna keep your purchases under $20. I would start with a bid of around eight to $10. And then again, work your way up by maybe one to $2 increments every six to 12 hours. If it's spending anything less than 15% of that total daily budget. Now, when it comes to the ad level, this is such a key and critical part of operating your business through TikTok ads. It is such a creative intensive platform, which means you have to have a lot of creatives lined up or a select few group of creatives that are incredibly native to the organic TikTok platform. So what I've noticed to work the best for me is generally when I send my product out to influencers, have them film either an unboxing or a review in which they can create a TikTok around and post organically. So I can take that piece of content that was meant to be a relatively natural post in the TikTok algorithm and use that as my ad creative. I find that making ads similar to Facebook where it's stitched together existing content does not work as well unless the editing is really, really on point and it looks relatively native to the platform. So here's where you'd go ahead and upload your creatives. If you have a creative without music, you can actually add it right here, but I'd recommend integrating music that makes sense towards the current trends on TikTok because literally the sound in the back of the ad can have a night and day difference in the ad performance. And every little thing that's changed just like in the Facebook ad algorithm is going to show up as a different post and it's going to be shown to a different group of people. And depending on that response, or if the initial audience it gets sent to doesn't have the best response to the creative, it probably isn't gonna spend as much, especially if your bid is a little bit too tight. So again, what I mean by this is you might have the exact same two creatives from the exact same influencer, but with different songs behind them and the people that you initially reach responded differently to both. So one of them, you might need a $20 bid in order to get a significant amount of spend in and the other, you might only need a $15 bid because the overall market response is better and therefore your ROAS is probably gonna be higher. Now, since for some reason you can't link your own TikTok account or at least to my knowledge, to your ads, you're going to have to put in the display name. Now I have split tested this by actually making it look like it is an influencer rather than the brand. And I have had a little bit of success in that area, but I am by no means a TikTok expert. So I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. But what I mean by that is that you can style it in a way where you can put whatever display name you want. So for example, you can put like the common first name of a celebrity. You might even be able to put a celebrity's name and get away with it. Don't don't quote me on that though, and make it seem like it is actually more of an influencer style post or even an organic post just with a shop now button or whatever call to action button you select that just pops up at the end of the video. And sometimes that makes it seem even more native than just having your brand name and an organic native style video. Now, obviously you can't do images because TikTok does not support image ads. So unlike Facebook, where I personally prefer images over videos, we're stuck to having to make really, really good ads and therefore possibly lining up influencers or paying a service so that a person can hold your product, mouth your brand name and showcase how it works. Or you can simply order the product yourself and film the TikToks yourself. 
It's actually not that hard. So for your ad copy, you're gonna wanna keep this short and sweet. Pretty much study other types of products or brands or posts and content on the platform of TikTok and see what's working for them when it comes to the copy and the length of it because naturally you are confined to only a few lines unlike Facebook and Instagram where you can pretty much have an infinite amount of space. I personally like to use the shop now button and of course you're gonna to wanna to put in your URL and customize your profile image. Once you are done with your first ad, you might wanna consider creating two or three other variations of it, either with different music or entirely different content because ad fatigue is definitely a real thing when it comes to TikTok, and it is even more prevalent and common for ad fatigue to take place within even the first week or two than it is on, let's say, Facebook or Instagram. Naturally, I've seen higher frequency and higher creative and audience overlap, and so I pretty much cycle in new creatives either weekly or twice per week. And that's pretty much it for my simple product testing strategy on TikTok. If you guys like this video, I would really appreciate it if you left a thumbs up and leave a comment below on your thoughts on this video or on any topics you'd like me to cover in a future video. And if you're interested in being personally coached by me, I encourage you to go ahead and fill out my one-on-one -on -one private coaching program application as one of the first links down below where we can actually go over this entire platform and I can teach you everything that I know about it start to finish together. And I'm only going to be selecting two people every month. So make sure that you fill out that application honestly and be patient for a response. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.